Hello, this is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we are going to show you how to create a RAID configuration on a Dell Precision T7910 workstation. We're also going to throw a little curveball in there. We're going to use an NVMe drive as a boot device. So, um, if you've never heard of us, we're from GreenPCGamers.com. Uh, we basically customize... Uh, precision workstations, Z series HP workstations, and some of the IBM workstations, we, we basically modify them for gaming or other cool um, uses. So um, what are we gonna install? We're gonna install a Western Digital 5 12 gig MVMS SSD. We do need a PCIe adapter for that card because the 7910 does not have a NVMe slot on the system board. So we're gonna use that as our boot device. Um, that's, you know, obviously installed in one of the I.O. slots. It's going to be completely separate. There is no RAID for that. Um, and then we're going to put four Dell certified, four terabyte uh, SATA, 7.2K, 6 gig enterprise level drives uh, in this system. And we are going to install those into that LSI 3008 uh, RAID controller that's built right into the motherboard. And as far as the RAID configuration goes, as we said, the NVMe drive is just a boot device, keeps it separate from those drives. Um, so if we get any sort of issues, you know, as far as viruses go, hopefully our RAID configuration is still intact with all of our important data. Um, so we're going to do RAID 10 with the 404 terabyte drives. It's going to give us roughly 7.5 terabyte usable space. And, uh, and a bunch of redundancy. So what RAID controller? As we said before, we are using the integrated LSI SAS 3008 RAID controller. Um, that is going to support SAS drives up to 12 gig per second. And the SATA drives that we are installing, they will run at 6 gig per second. All right, so here's our system, Precision T7910. Here's our NVMe drive with the PCIe adapter. You can pause it on there if you want to see the model. There's our PCIe adapter that we're using. That will be our boot device. And here are the Constellation 4 terabyte SATA drives. They it looks like they're manufactured by Seagate, um, but they are considered Dell Enterprise Class certified drives. So these are the trays. These should typically come stock with your 7910 if you don't have them. Um, you can typically order them on you know on the internet in multiple places. So each drive does need a tray. Um, first, we're going to do our NVMe drive install. We've already got into the adapter. R7910 has two processors and install it, so it opens up the top PCI Express slot. So we are going to go ahead and install that NVMe drive right up in the top here. Keep it away from everything else. And it doesn't produce much heat, so I mean you could put it pretty much anywhere that you have a PCI Express slot. So it's a very easy install. There are no additional drivers needed for this card. So we're gonna load Windows 10 Pro on that drive, and then we'll keep our RAID configuration separate. So all right, so now we need to pop in our four terabyte drives. They go right in the front of the chassis. There's a little lever on the right side of the chassis, as you can see. Go ahead and push down, open it up, and now you can see that we have four drive slots. We actually have eight uh, slots, but the two and a half inch slots above don't have the optional uh, cable harness installed. So let's go ahead and put those drives in, line up the SATA connections. And these kind of work like hot plug drives. And you just pop them right inside and they clip in like so and we'll do that with the next drive so you want to make sure that when you put your drives into those black brackets make sure that they're secure and the four fixed their little metal brackets the that the holes line up into if they're not if that's uh, installed properly in the tray they won't mount properly so take your time when installing these drives um, they should install exactly like like so, like you see in the video here. So we're doing four terabyte. You don't have to do four terabyte. You could do one terabyte drives, two terabyte drives, three terabyte drives. Um, 
you know, whatever will get you that amount of space that you were looking for. So we've got our drives installed. Now we'll go ahead and put that faceplate back on. Clips light back into place. All right, so now at this point, we're gonna turn the system on, let it, let it boot up and post, and it's gonna bring to this screen. Um, and we have already enabled the, the SAS controller in the BIOS, so if this screen doesn't pop up, that means you have to enable that SAS controller, and we'll show that in a little bit. So it, it'll pop up and say Control C, hit Control C, it'll invoke the SAS configuration utility, like you're seeing on the screen. And then once it boots into the SAS utility, we'll go ahead and hit Enter on the LSI SAS 3008IR. Um, use your arrow keys to go down to RAID properties. Okay, so uh, right here we have three different options as far as RAID goes, and this all depends on how many drives you have installed. So if you only have two uh, you know, large capacity drives installed or whatever you have in there, uh, you can do what's called a RAID 1, where the drives mirror. Um, you can do what's called a RAID 10 volume, um, or a RAID 1E, but RAID 10 is, is ideal. That's what we're going to install. You need to have a minimum of four drives to do that, So, which we do have four drives. So we're going to do RAID 10. Uh, there's also an option for RAID 0. RAID 0 would just span all the drives together. So, for example, our four four terabyte drives, there would be zero redundancy, but it would show us almost 16 terabyte of, uh, of, of space, but there's zero redundancy. RAID 10, we're going to have a bunch of redundancy. RAID 1 is mirroring. So, But, yeah, we are going to choose RAID 10. Because what's a RAID configuration without any redundancy? We're going to use our NVMe drive for um, our, our boot software, anything that we want to open up really fast. And we're going to dump any important files under this RAID 10 once we're finished with this. Now, you absolutely want to have an, another you know backup device, hopefully off-site, other than this RAID configuration. This RAID will be great, but if you had some sort of disaster you know, on-site, you know, a fire, a flood, I don't say anything. Um, you'll definitely want to have all these files that you back up to this RAID configuration on a, somewhere, hopefully off-site on the cloud. So so basically, to select those drives, we just uh, arrowed over to the where it says RAID disk, and we hit space bar, and we kept going down, space bar, and I turned them all to yes. Once you do that, you'll see that we have a RAID 10 configuration, uh, volume size 7.275 terabyte then we'll go ahead down here and hit C to create that volume once we've hit C we'll save change exit S sorry save change and exit let's go back a little bit that was pretty fast save change and same changes as exit it's creating the raid volume now we can go back into raid properties and we can see that they're all RAID disks. Let's go ahead and manage that volume. And we see that it's it's created. Now, it's still, uh, it's, it's optimal, but it's still initializing. So that's gonna take quite a bit of time because of you know the, the capacity of the drives that we installed. So that'll happen in the background. So if you do plan to load your operating system on this RAID 10 and skip the NVMe, you can do that right now. It's just gonna run a little bit slower than it normally would. So you can go in here and mess around with configurations. They also have this hot spare option, which we didn't do, but that's an option. Okay, so our RAID configuration is configured. Um, it's initializing, but we can still go and take a peek and, and look at things. So next step is to go into the boot sequence and make sure that we're booting to the correct device. Right now, if you, if you can see right here, this LUN, that is our RAID 10 configuration. So we don't want to boot to that because there's no OS on there. Our boot device is this Western Digital NVMe drive. So we're going to go ahead and fix that and make the NVMe the number one boot device. And then we have this set up as legacy. We'll apply it uh, and then be able to save that. Now, if you are still having trouble enabling your SAS controller, which should be enabled already, but if you're not seeing that like earlier in the video, go into system configuration, you'll see SAS controller, just enable it. Then you can start everything over. Okay, so our boot devices are set up exactly the way we want them. Booting to the NVMe drive. Now we need to go into our windows and make uh, 
make that disc usable. So it is four, four terabyte drives. We're going to get roughly a little over seven terabyte native. So we need to go in and manage the disc and make it usable. So we'll assign it a letter path. Um, and then at that point we're ready to use the drive. So, uh, right click on the start, go to disk management. Uh, it's seen the drive already. We'll go ahead and let it be GPT. So it's unallocated right now. Right click on it. New simple volume. Click next. Uh, we'll leave it as letter E. And we're going to name it. Let's see. Let's name it RAID 10. So we know what RAID configuration it's in at a later date if we have an issue. So RAID 10 volume. All right, go ahead and finish. It's going to format those drives. All right, so everything is, is showing up properly. So we, now if we go to File Explorer, we see our RAID 10 volume. Right click on it. And 7.27 terabyte free space. So that is perfect. That's exactly what we want to do. We have our boot devices NVMe, and we have a RAID 10 configuration to dump all of our important storage on. All right, I'm going to take you to greenpcgamers.com real quick. If you have a Precision T7910 or another Precision Workstation and you need more information on upgrades, you have to check out this site. Go to the blog. You can search models. The T7910 is right on top. It's going to give you processor upgrade options, memory upgrade options, uh, hard drive options, uh, as well as graphics card options. So you definitely have to check out that site. Thanks again for watching this video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you like what you're seeing. If you have live questions, uh, go ahead and... Follow me on Twitch. Uh, my handle's right there. You can ask live hardware questions. Um, if we miss something, go ahead and comment below. Uh, we'll try to answer it as fast as we can. Thanks again for watching.